Something I want to talk about real quickly here is the return of the tribes. I had a brother in the Lord talk to me about this many, many years ago, and I've, I've thought about it off and on since then. And, um, you know, you got to understand that for thousands of years, people were very tribal, um, very much sticking to their close little tribe, basically, and warring with other tribes. And that might seem very distant, but it's only because we've not looked at it through the vision of seeing things as tribes. I'm going to show you some proof on that today. But I want to show you what the scriptures say. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. Uh, kind of an interesting little tie-in here. Matthew 24 verse 30 says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Tribes of the earth. Now, I do teach and preach that that is the 12 tribes of, of the nation of Israel. I think that that is the fulfillment of that. Um, why? Well, because of the Old Testament prophecy. I think it's in the book of Zechariah that talks about they will mourn when they see their Messiah, essentially. And they're going to say that, you know, that he's been pierced in his hands and his feet and things. They're going to be mourning over that. Well, the, you know, Gentile nations, the heathen nations, are they really going to mourn when they see Jesus Christ come? Well, maybe. I don't know. But uh, that's the only, you know, most of the past, most say it this way, most references in Scripture to tribes, it's almost always a reference to the nation of Israel. But this one here doesn't specifically say Israel, but you can make the argument that it is. But for instruction in righteousness today, uh, and correction and reproof, I guess you could say too, we're going to look at the thing of tribes and how, that, uh, how you have different tribes that would actually, you know, that are appearing and people are separating themselves into tribes and when the full fulfillment of this thing is. Obviously, you see it there at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. There, all the tribes of the earth are mourning, okay, when they see the Son of Man. And again, the Jews are the ones looking for the Son of Man. So I do believe doctrinally it's for the Jews. But uh, look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. And then shall uh, many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. <laughs> uh, is there hatred developing right now? Yes. Um, and they, it's so funny because they come out with this stuff and they say we need to, uh, you know, be worried about hate crimes and all this other stuff. We need to have legislation to stop hate and all this. You are out of your mind. Uh, all that's going to do is make it worse. Okay, why? Because one group is going to charge the other one with hate crimes. And they're going to say, oh, no, we don't. You know, we're, I hate you. And do you hate hate crimes? You know, and the whole thing. Um, it's nonsense. Uh, hate legislation. I mean, you can't legislate people hating something. Okay, that's stupid. All right. But the sign of the end times is going to be very much fighting and war and killing and death. And I believe the tribes are coming back and they're already here. I want to discuss a couple of those. Revelation chapter six, verses one through four. This isn't a real big detailed study or anything, just some interesting points I've been thinking about, a lot about lately. Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's the Antichrist there when he shows up. Verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Jesus Christ is opening these seals as judgment on a world that has rejected him as, as their Savior. Okay? So you have uh, war coming and peace being taken from the earth, and people are killing one another. You know, so you'd think a place like this would be beautiful and, and peaceful during this time. Uh, no place is going to be peaceful. You might be able to get away from some of the fighting and killing and whatever, but wherever you go, there's going to be fighting and killing in terms of where there are people. We'll say it that way. Um, and what's going to happen? People are going to form into tribes. We say, uh, well, that's in the future. No, it's happening right now. The killing just hasn't started yet, you see. 
let me list a couple twelve or a couple tribes for you here. This is just a small list. I mean, there's so, so many in other countries and whatever else. I just wrote down a couple of them here. I'm gonna show you pictures just to prove my point. How about Black Lives Matter, the tribe of Black Lives Matter? They have their own flag. There's one in a town not far from here, and it's got the Black Lives Matter flag flying and a rainbow fly, flag, you know, flying along with it. You say, well, now, come on, there's, there's some within the movement that aren't violent. Yeah, but there's a lot that are, you see. And there's some that clash with other members and other groups and things like this. Other tribes, dare I say? How about Antifa? They're fighting. They formed into a tribe. See, people, again, they think nations are the modern-day tribes. Not really. Tribes are smaller groups. And they're all over the place. You just don't think about it. You see it and you just think, oh, it's not really a tribe. Oh, yeah, it is. How about the alt-right movement? Are there tribes within that? People that are willing to fight for their tribe? Guys in the picture look like they're ready to fight. How about oath keepers? Guys that are ex-military or, or ex-law you know, enforcement officers. And they're saying, we're, we're going to defend our oath and whatever. Again, here's a picture of them. You can see, uh, I think they're ready to fight. They got the AR-15s and all their tactical gear on and everything else. Uh, don't tell me that those guys aren't ready for some trigger time. I used to know guys like that. Go to the gun shops. I hear the talk. I know the talk that goes on. They're ready to kill. They're actually looking forward to it, a lot of those guys. And I understand why they're saying it. Because freedom is being, you know trashed and whatever else and people are trying to take more and more of their rights away and take their guns from them and whatever else that's a tribe they're going to fight a lot of these people there there's not going to be any kind of a uh well you know okay let's just all kind of get along and whatever that thing is one of the biggest scams that there is and you know what the the main reason i have for saying that because the bible said that there's going to be war it doesn't say, oh, it's just going to be this wonderful time and everybody's going to come together and put aside their differences and whatever else. That is nonsense. It's never happened in all of history. The history of man has been one of war and fighting and killing and death. You say, oh, the Bible's such a bloody book. What about evolution? Evolution, the very, their very process, is all about death. So if you're an atheist out there and you're griping and complaining about God being such a bloody killer, what about your own system of belief? Talk about war and death. Hey, buddy, that's how you get ahead. One tribe, tribe wipes out the other one. Well, the, that tribe that survived is the strong tribe. They should be allowed to breed. Atheists are a bunch of stupid hypocrites. I mean, my word. These people make me so sick. You're not part of my tribe, in other words. <laughs> how about the uh, Me Too movement? Here's a picture of them, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but are they a tribe? They're coming together uh, with their common calls of bashing men. How about the uh, Aztlan Reconquista, the uh, Mexican movement of trying to retake Texas and a lot, you know, California, a lot of those southern states? Are they a tribe? Yeah. Are they planning violence against white people that live down south? Yeah. You say, well, that, that's a terrible thing. Well, not to them. It's not terrible. To them, they have a, a cause. They want to fight for something. They want to retake land that was taken from them by the white man. You say, are you for that? No. You know, if they take it, well, whatever. <laughs> you know, I have other things to do with my life. I'm not going to give my support to any of these tribes. I'm a Christian. All right, I'm part of a truly nonviolent tribe. Uh, in terms of uh, we're not going to go out and conquer anything for the greater glory of God or whatever. That's the Jesuits, you know, but they're not a tribe. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, how about the Nation of Islam? Is that a tribe? Are they planning to do violent things? So, well, no, their, their, their uh, statements that they make on their website are peaceful. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, peace is a, is, a, is a good thing to put out there promise of peace it gives you time to reload and arm to the teeth that's what most peace movements are bide your time till the real fighting starts 
you know. Oh, but the United Nations, they won't they won't let this happen. Oh, you mean the United Nations it's sponsored over what 150 wars now since their incep inception? Huh. Yeah. How about the uh, Faithful Word Baptist Church? So, oh, come on. They have openly said that they're going to put adulterers and sodomites to death when a righteous government comes to power. Oh, and reprobates. And now they're changing the definition of reprobate to somebody that's even wrong doctrinally. So I am now considered a reprobate. And one of these little losers, these little faithful word Baptist church actually in Los Angeles, Bruce Mejia, he actually said, when this righteous government comes in, he's coming after me personally. Brian Denlinger, me. Are they planning to kill people? Yeah. When their uh, righteous government comes in, Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they are actually a listed on the ACLU's website as a hate group. So don't just think, oh, it's just you, you know, whatever. They're hateful people. Holocaust denying, Jew hating, wanting to put people to death. That's a tribe. The new IFB is a tribe. And, you know, you know oh, but they're, that's just a religious, they're waging war against other churches. You better believe they are. And if the time comes, don't even tell me that these guys wouldn't go out and kill Christians. Wouldn't torture other people. You know they would. Number nine, how about pre-Vatican II Catholics? Traditional Catholics, they call themselves. They reject the things of the ecumenical councils and whatever else. They want to kill Christians just as bad as the uh, IFB, new IFB people. Oh, actually, some of the IFB people as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what about them? Is that a tribe? Yep, absolutely. And the uh, new IFB and the pre-Vatican II Catholics are going to be two of the most powerful tribes on earth when the Antichrist is unleashed. Body of Christ is gone, Antichrist gets unleashed, new IFB and the Catholics are going to join together. New IFB, they're basically Catholic anyways. They're going to go right into that system. How about the black Hebrew Israelites? Are they a tribe? Yes, one of the more idiotic tribes out there. Uh, just, my word, those people have so much hate. I can't even stomach watching their videos. They're just, oh my, ugh, you know? But do you look at their propaganda that they put out? They want to kill white people. They're a racist organization, and yet they don't get much media coverage. Figure that one out. Um, are the tribes coming back? Uh, no, they're already here. Um... The question is simply, what tribe are you going to be part of in the future? What side are you going to take? And I'll, I'll grant you, it's going to be rough for, for Christians. You know, if, I, I mean, some of this stuff could happen. There could be some fighting and some wars and whatever else uh, before the catching up of the body of Christ. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, you got to make some decisions in the future. Uh, you know, stand by the book. Stand by the Bible. Um, but the time might come, you're not going to be able to be a pacifist. Okay? <laughs> but uh, Jesus Christ prophesied that this stuff is going to happen, brethren. There's no way to get around it. And uh, it's His judgment. You say, well, how do we put off the Lord's judgment as the body of Christ? By doing His will. Serving Him. Don't get complacent. Don't get worldly. Who knows? Lord might hold off this stuff until after we go. But uh, if it comes, <laughs> you have to follow the Bible. You have to do what you can to follow the Word of God. But uh, you aren't going to be able to avoid the, the tribal mindset that's coming. Uh, we're going right back into it. Because I believe the Bible prophesies it. Just some things to help you think. Um, your hope needs to be in Jesus Christ because then no matter what happens, you're going to be safe. You're going to have an eternity in heaven when you die. That's very important. Get that figured out today.